here we're going to review our experiment. It's just a little demonstration. Um, a USJ root zone operates with a perched water table where the water will stand just above the pea gravel at that interface where the differential occurs in particle size. And um, so it's really a water conserving mechanism. The challenge is if it doesn't flush frequently enough, that bottom area there that stays wet, saturated, turns anaerobic and can become problematic, not only with poor biology, but with iron precipitating out and sealing up the, um, that zone, uh, impeding drainage. So if you get frequent enough rain events, um, the flushing occurs and things are fine. If it doesn't, and you need to flush it mechanically with irrigation, that's tough to do because um, it takes a lot of water, time, and it could interfere with play and certainly impact playing conditions. But it is a management technique to try to replenish the soil gases down deep and refresh the water that may get stagnant down below. So what we're testing here is the idea of using PC drainage as part of the construction in that we put the rope that works with capillary action, you can see it's still dripping, and lay this rope up, take this rope through the four inch pea gravel layer, inside these buckets there's four inches of pea gravel, then your 12 inch root zone. So this rope comes up through the pea gravel and then lays out on top of the gravel before you apply the sand. This represents a traditional drainage system that uh, is in that four, inch pea, four inches of pea gravel. So when the, uh, the water saturates the sand enough, it purges through the gravel and out this drain. The idea of this rope is to have a slow leaking drain, if you will, that runs continuously if it's wet enough in that lower zone of the sand. So you can see here what we did is we put the sand, we, we, first of all we got the, the sand all equally wet and then um, there was no water coming out of the, of, the, of the drain tubes but the sand was moist. Then we put five gallons in each one of these and then we collected it overnight and you can see the level of water is much higher in this bucket than this bucket. So the wicking action of this rope is truly contributing to the drainage of the sand. We're going to repeat this again tonight and, uh, and we're going to measure the difference of this water. Again, put the same amount of water in each one and see what comes out the drainage systems. What Dave's doing here is he's going to water each one of these containers equally, five gallons in each and um, we got the sand pre-soaked so we um, first we added the same amount of water each side until it started to come out of the drain tile so we know it's saturated then um, we're going to add the same amount of water and we're going to measure what comes out of the gravitational drain here out of both of them and then after we measure that when that stops flowing then we're going to let it sit overnight and see how much more the rope you can see it's still dripping how much more the rope's going to um, wick away from the uh, the bottom of the perched water table here this one just started to flow so you can see Applying five gallons in this area, it takes a little bit of time for it to get saturated to the point where it actually starts to flow out of the pipe. So it's got to hit that critical state of saturation before it flushes through the pea gravel interface. I also wanted to point out that we do have them on a slight angle using a 2x4. See how much of an angle that is sloping down towards the end of the drain. So I'm going to see how much water comes out through gravitational drainage and then uh, measure that and then when this stops flowing we will measure the how much comes out through the rope PC drainage during the overnight hours. 